YouTube again? Yeah? Man, when did I lose you guys? I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right. Sorry, guys. Anyway, <laughs> let's keep on going. I've got some questions here in the chat on manifesting. Go ahead and drop your questions. I'm so sorry. I dropped the sound on my mic. I touched a button. And it went off. If you've got questions regarding manifesting, go ahead and put them in the chat. I'm going to go through and answer one real quick, and then we'll get back to our topic here on how you may be tested by the universe. All right. All right. So, okay. Aura Jane's got a great question here. One of, okay, she says here, one of my questions to you is how can I not allow social media to negatively influence my vibration? I must use social media to promote my business and it's hard not to let what others post affect me. How many of you guys have had that experience before where you're using social media and it is impacting your vibration negatively? Any of you guys had that situation before? Oh, hold on a second. Whoops. There goes Facebook. See, this is what happens when you try to do too many things at once. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, so our question is, what do you do about getting your vibration up when you're dealing with social media? And a lot of people have this experience where they're dealing with social media and they're getting frustrated because whenever they log in, they're seeing things that they don't want to see, or they're getting dragged into focusing on things they don't want to focus on. So what do you do in that kind of a situation? All right. So the first thing I would say is that this is something I mentioned on a live earlier, which is that you definitely want to be mindful about how you're using your phones and notifications, how often you're logging in, what kind of content that you're looking at. One thing that can be useful is to go through and vet your feed. So, and, and hopefully you guys have kind of seen this before where you can go through, you can unfollow things that are not working for you. You can make sure to follow pages and content that are higher vibration in nature or things that are helpful to you rather than hurtful. Um, another great thing, this is a little trick I've got. If you are finding that social media is overwhelming to you, you can go ahead and take apps like off your phone for a period of time. So for instance, like Facebook used to really pull me in. I couldn't get off of Facebook. Okay. So now what I'll do is like during the day, I can delete Facebook off of my phone so that I'm not just jumping on in there and having my vibration go all willy nilly all over the place. Now, the nice thing about deleting the apps off of your phone is that you can always go back in. You're not deleting Facebook entirely or Instagram or TikTok. You're not deleting it forever. You're just deleting it during that time period where you want to be able to stay on, on course and stay focused. Other things that are important to do are absolutely making sure to go ahead and turn off notifications. I talked about this in a prior live. When you're constantly being inundated by notifications, what can happen is that your vibration is getting dragged all over the place. Okay. You see that little red check or whatever, and you immediately want to go jump on in. You immediately want to go focus in on whatever was on that notification. And something that's really important when it comes to maintaining your vibration is making sure that you stay the course and that you're really in staying in alignment with what it is that you want to be doing. And when we're constantly inundated with notifications, that can really throw us off. Okay, so that's something that I do recommend is disabling notifications from social media from your phone. Just go log in when you want to log in. If you're having a hard time not keeping your nose out of it and it's frustrating to you, delete it from your phone. And then you have to actually make a conscious effort to re-put it back on your phone and re-get back onto it so that you can use it when you want. And then finally, go through and vet the stuff that you're actually watching. Okay, so, you know, you don't have to delete your friends, but you can unfollow the ones that are <laughs> putting the crazy stuff on and you can put on more positive pages and you can ask not to be notified by certain things that are bothersome to you. All right. Thank you for your question. Again, if you guys got questions about manifesting, go ahead and throw them in the chat. Again, today I'm talking about is the universe testing you before manifestation? 
The first test for a recap for YouTube, because my sound went out and y'all didn't get to hear that one. <laughs> the first test was the series of unfortunate events test. Okay, so if all of a sudden you find that life is going crazy and there's all kinds of problems, that will frequently happen when you're raising your vibration and you are adjusting your consciousness into a higher frequency. And things that are not in alignment with that will fall out of the picture. And so you may lose friends, you may lose a job, you may even get sick. There may be kind of this series of unfortunate events that occurs. And that frequently does happen when you're on the verge of manifesting something big and your consciousness has altered radically. So when that happens, stay calm, breathe into it and remind yourself, okay, I'm adjusting my consciousness into a higher state. That's why I'm having these big changes right now. Okay. Stay calm. Okay. Stay calm. All right. For our next point here. And oh yeah. One thing I do want to mention guys, this is coming up. If you didn't hear about this in the last live, I do have a, two of my programs are having their best price of the year sale. The first one is the manifesting mastery program. That one's for beginners to intermediate law of attraction students. It is my kind of beginner boot camp law of attraction program. And also for people who have like spotty or inconsistent results with manifesting, that program is going to be 50% off coming up very soon, as well as my signs from the universe program is having its best year sale. And that one is going to be a program that's all about following guidance. And so I do have some links that I'm going to go ahead and put up. I believe the one in YouTube, I believe the one in Facebook's already there. If you guys see that link, let me know. If it's not there, let me know and I'll put it in. For YouTube, I just went ahead and popped that one in. If you're interested in getting notifications when those programs do go on sale, please make sure to go ahead and select that link. It will put you onto the email list so you get all of the notifications as well as those coupon codes. All right, so on YouTube, that one is now up at the top of the page. Okay. Very good. Yeah, I think the link is on Facebook. If you guys don't see it, let me know. All right. But yeah, those programs, that's the best sale of the year. It's not going to be any lower price ever. So those are two of my most popular programs. If you're interested, go ahead and check out that link. All right, so I'm looking for questions here. We've got lots of questions coming in about manifesting. And if you've got questions, go ahead and throw them into the chat. <laughs> Let's see what we've got here. All right, Monica here has a question. Monica's, Monica's question says, was about to get back with my husband after two years of separation, moved to the beach, manifested affordable living for both of us, and he got the perfect job. Then it fell apart. Is this a test? Yeah. Um, one thing I would think about, you know, is that what you really want? Okay. Do you really want to have that relationship back together or do you want it not to work out? Or is it possible that you're unsure about which direction to go? Okay. Sometimes in relationships, you may see this where things come together, things come apart. And sometimes that can happen when you have uncertain energy. Okay. So for what's going on there was about to get back with husband after two years of separation. So you already had a separation. You were already together. Now you're apart. Now it looks like you're coming back together. Now you're apart. Okay. For that, 
I might be thinking about it, particularly if you're looking at an existing relationship that's been going on for a long time, very likely that there is some uncertain energy about which direction we want to take. Okay. So a lot of times with longer term relationships, it can be a mixed bag of vibration. So we're looking at things that we think are positive about the partner that we like, and also things that are negative about the partner that we don't like. And so that can kind of keep us oscillating back and forth. And so that's one thing in that particular situation, I would become really keen on which direction do I truly want. And if the problems in the relationship seem unsurmountable, it may be easier to go in a different direction and expect a positive result from a different relationship. But if you really want that relationship to work, then what you want to do is you want to get really dialed in and focused on what do you really like about your partner, what's positive about your partner, and really start to put aside any negative feelings that you have about them or about the situation. Another great suggestion for a situation like that, if you're trying to reconcile with the partner, is that you want to get into a higher vibration and then deal with your partner. Okay, let me say that again. If you're having problems with your partner and you're going back and forth, all right, you want to get into a higher vibration and then deal with your partner. So don't talk to them when you're in a bad mood. Don't try and iron out the problems <laughs> when you feel the problems are there really make it your mission to get into the higher vibration and then you call them. The higher vibration and then you think about it. The higher vibration and then you talk to them. So that every time you're dealing with your partner, you're in that higher vibrational state. Okay, that's what we're looking to do. Okay, that can help with that kind of situation. Because again, what you're saying there, Monica, this kind of back and forth with a long-term partner, oftentimes indicates that we have split energy. We kind of want it to work and we're kind of sick of it. <laughs> so we have to get on board with one or the other. If you really want it to work, then you really got to focus in on what do I like about my partner, my husband, what's great about him, what's working out, why is this working? And then really as much as possible, only be dealing with him when you're in the highest vibration possible. All right. Yes, again, guys, go ahead and drop some questions in the chat if you've got questions about manifesting. I am casting this to Facebook for the first time, so this is kind of back and forth. Hello, Shanika. Oh, my God, I'm so happy to have caught you live. Oh, thank you for showing up. It's nice to see you. Guillaume lets me know. Yep, on the YouTube. All right. All right, guys. So in today's uh, live, the main theme is we're talking about when the universe tests you before manifestation. Okay. And so I've got another test here for you. This is a common test that can happen with the law of attraction that can throw a monkey wrench into your manifesting plans, but it doesn't have to. When you know that these tests are coming, then you can work through them and you can you can see them kind of as a and as an omen a fortuitous omen that your manifestation is actually coming because these things are very very common and they don't mean that you're screwing up they may look like you're screwing up but they don't mean that they're, that you're screwing up they mean that you're actually very close to manifestation you just need to know how to navigate these particular issues all right all right so our next one Okay, this is the almost but not quite test. Almost but not quite test. Okay, so this test occurs where you're wanting to manifest something and you're getting something, but it's not quite what you want. All right, so let's say maybe you're out there dating and you're wanting to manifest a relationship with a girlfriend and you're attracting girls, right? And they're close but they're not quite what you want. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, you're not being ridiculously picky, but like there's like a deal, there's like a deal breaker in there. Maybe there's one deal breaker you just can't deal with. All right. Um, for me, this was something I used to see a lot with clothing. This is a silly little manifestation issue that I used to have. When I used to go out shopping to buy clothes, I would go out and I would have the intention of finding like nice outfit and I would find stuff that was close but not exactly what I wanted. 
And so then I would end up with clothes at home that were almost good, but they weren't great. Like they were the wrong color or the cut was a little bit off. And I could never really wear them and really enjoy them because they always felt like they weren't right. Okay. And so this is something that can happen. That's a test from the universe when it comes to manifestation is that there's something that you want and the universe may throw you some close approximations. All right? <laughs> and your job when you see this test is to hold the, hold the course and maintain your standards on what it is that you really, really want. Okay. So what I mean by that is if, if the fish is no good, throw the fish back. Now, I don't mean like if you're dating, like anybody with the slightest little issues, you just throw them back. I don't mean that. But what I mean is if there's a deal breaker, if there's something that makes this unworkable, throw it back. Don't accept it. Now, throwing the fish back is an, is an abundance mindset. Meaning if I get something that I don't actually 100% want, I say, you know what? Toss this one back for somebody else. There's another one coming. The message that I put out to the universe is that there's always more stuff for me that's in the pipeline that I can get. All right. So you are going to be able to align with what it is that you actually want when you navigate this test successfully. Okay. So if the universe throws you something that's close, but not what you want, throw it back. There's another one coming. So like I mentioned before, my silly little example with the clothing. So I used to go out shopping and if I found something that was close, I would buy it. I wouldn't throw it back. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say this is no, this isn't going to work. I would just take it because it was the best thing that I could find in the moment. And as such, I always ended up finding clothing that wasn't quite right. And I didn't dress that well because all of my clothes were just a little bit off. Well, when I learned about this test and about the abundance mindset of throwing things back that don't work, now, when I go shopping, if I pick up something off the rack and there's something just not quite wrong, like the cut's just a little bit off, the color is just a little bit off, there's something about it that's just not quite right, I put it back on the rack, even if it pains me to do so. And as a result, now when I go shopping, it's almost remarkable because it's like my eyes almost have a beeline and I'll go pick something up and it will be perfect, absolutely perfect. Like when I go shopping now, it's not a problem. I can walk into any store and I can usually find at least two or three things that are absolutely perfect because the message that I have with clothing is an abundance mindset. There's something out there for me that's perfect. I don't need to settle for less. Okay. So when you have this happen to you, realize that this is a test. A lot of times people settle. So they get a job offer that's close, but it's not what they actually want and they take it and they're not happy. Okay. Don't take the job. Wait for the next one. Now, a lot of people think, oh, if you do that, there's not another one coming. Right. But that's a lack mentality. When I hold on to something that's not quite right out of fear that there's nothing else, what I'm saying energetically is there's nothing else out there for me. This is as good as I'm going to get. And through the law of attraction, that's what's going to happen. So you want to be careful to just go ahead and toss those things back. Again, you don't have to throw every fish away. This isn't about kicking every boyfriend or girlfriend to the curb. But if it's not a good fit, it's not a good fit, okay? And, and holding on to things that is not a good fit is how you fail this test, okay? So make sure that you're passing the test. Give yourself permission to throw things back that are not working for you. All right. Michael says, nothing on Facebook is positive. <laughs> I hope I'm positive, Michael. <laughs> well, but you know what? I get what you're saying. When I'm scrolling through Facebook, yeah, I mean, it can really get to me too. I, I get it. I get it. Okay. If you guys got questions, go ahead and throw them into the chat. Looking for questions here to answer both on Facebook and on YouTube. YouTube, hopefully I've got my sound still kicking over here now. Sorry again about that. All right. Ooh, that's a good question. All right. So before I move on, just a reminder, guys, if you are not currently subscribed, go ahead and subscribe, follow, like, all that stuff. You guys know it helps me out. I do appreciate it. 
Also, if you are new to my work and you have not yet taken my manifesting test, please make sure to go ahead and do that. That is at manifestingtest.com. It is a free manifesting test where you can put something out and watch it come back. Again, that's manifestingtest.com. Mary, if you would throw that one into the YouTube chat, I would appreciate that. Mary is my assistant, so she's over on YouTube right now. And we've got some questions here. Okay. Oh, I like this question. I got a question here from Leah. Leah says, how to manifest a perfect career when you don't know what you want to do? Is it possible to manifest a career that doesn't exist that has to do with my passion? <laughs> yes. Okay. So this is actually the advice that I usually give for careers is that a lot of times people want a career, but they don't know how to get to the career or what what career they would even want. Okay. So a lot of times that's the struggle that people have is like, I want to have a passionate career, but I, I don't know what it is that I'm going to do. So the, the really great news is that you don't need to know what it is that you're going to do in order to manifest the perfect career for you. All right. That's not necessary. What is necessary, however, is that if you do have a current job or a current profession you really want to step into the resonance of finding a way to like somehow or improve somehow your current job. What I, I don't mean that you're going to tell yourself you like a job that you hate. That's not what I'm saying. Okay. That's not possible. What I am saying is that when you go to work, you want to find a way to do your job in a way that's more authentic to you and enjoyable to you. So maybe the kinds of clothing that you're wearing to your job are different, or you pick up a different kind of shift. Or, you know, here was something that I used to do. Like I would have to deal with like in like a customer service type situation, it would be fun sometimes to put on a different persona. So like maybe you're working in a call center and you really hate your call center job, but then like make it your mission to like, okay, every time I talk to somebody, let me see if I can get them to laugh. Or let me use a British accent. Let me do something funny. And finding a way to make your job more fun by your own terms. Now, the reason why this can be helpful in helping you manifest the job or the career that you want is that very frequently people have a negative vibration or a negative belief structure about careers and what it means to work. And so they're sitting in a job saying, I hate my job. I hate my job. I hate my job. I hate my job. And then they don't understand why even if they get a new job, they hate that new job. Well, energetically, I've been putting out, I hate my job, I hate my job, I hate my job. So any job I line up with, I'm going to hate. But you can change that by taking your current position and focusing on, okay, this is, this is how I do this authentically and enjoy it. And so a new job that is more in resonance with your authentic self will emerge at some point. Another thing, because she's talking here about passions, you definitely want to keep dialing in on your passion. So your passion may not right now be related to your work. So again, let's say right now you're working in a call center, but your passion is the violin. Okay. Those two things don't necessarily go together, right? <laughs> well, maybe you could find a way, but they probably don't right now. Well, you don't want to just not do your passion. Okay. So still be focusing on playing the violin, still be thinking about the violin, find a way to somehow bring it into your job, maybe have a picture of it, but get it kind of in your environment. Okay. And so what's going to happen is that over time, the more you focus on your passion and the more you focus on the idea that I enjoy work, the more those two things are going to meld together. And yes, you may create a career that's very unique. So I know today a lot of people do like, you know, do stuff like this. But back when I started this stuff, people weren't really doing this stuff. This was something that just kind of came up. I was working as a teacher and I didn't want to teach anymore, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. But I knew I was passionate about the law of attraction. So I just worked on improving my working conditions and trying to enjoy my workday as much as possible. And simultaneously, I was really focused on learning about the law of attraction. And then one day it just clicked. Oh, I could go teach people about the law of attraction. And off I went. 
All right. So this is the kind of stuff that will happen that I wasn't thinking about a career in the law of attraction. That was so far left field. Wouldn't have ever thought about that before. But in following that passion, it gained momentum and it eventually dragged me in. And so now that I'm now I'm doing what it is that I do today. So don't assume that you that your passion can't be lucrative because it can be. But you definitely want to correct at the same time as putting in time with your passion. If you have any belief structures that work isn't fun, I hate my job. You definitely want to work on that. All right, guys. Again, please go ahead and put your questions into the chat. And yes, this is my first time on doing a simultaneous cast on Facebook and YouTube. I don't know how well this is going. If this is just all over the place, let me know. <laughs> I figured we'd try to do it both at the same time but we'll see how it goes. All right. And yes, in today's live, I did want to talk about some tests that are very common with the law of attraction. These are things that can get in your way of manifesting. Hello, Joyce on Facebook. All right. Okay, so our next test that the universe may be throwing you, okay? And then these tests, again, do not mean that you're screwing up. They mean that you're actually getting close to manifestation. They mean that you're actually doing something right. But a lot of times when people have these tests, they freak out and then they lose their momentum, all right? Again, our first test was the series of unfortunate events test. Our second test was the almost but not quite test. And this next test, this next test, it's the never-ending hamster wheel test. <laughs> the never-ending hamster wheel test. Maybe you guys have seen this test before where you keep having the same repetitive issue keeps coming up again and again and again, all right? So maybe you and your spouse keep having the same argument again and again and again. Or maybe you're starting to date somebody and they keep ghosting you again and again and again. So what's going on in that situation is that you are being shown at that point in time very clearly from the universe what is the one limitation. Usually it's just one limitation that is getting in the way of you manifesting a good result. Okay, so if you want something, you want a new love, you want a new relationship, you want some money, whatever, you want something. If you have a block in your mind that you have not yet released, but there's you're close enough that other things are pulling you towards it, you'll get right up against that dream, but then it will get blocked by your limitation. And so if you're seeing the same thing happen, where you're having that same hamster wheel problem again and again and again, the universe is trying to show you, this is your limitation. We need to clear this before you proceed. Now, the other thing about this is that one, this is so important, okay? <laughs> Let's say that you work on clearing that block. You realize that you're too attached or you realize that you've been thinking negatively. You realize what the block is and you have that aha moment. You're like, I'm going to change this belief and you get your mind on straight. And then the same thing happens again. You get ghosted again or you have the same argument again or you have the same problem again. That's where a lot of people give up. But here's the thing to understand. You will always be presented with the same block one last time to make sure you actually cleared it. So what I mean by that is, let's say that you're in a relationship or a situationship that keeps going back and forth. Okay, you're trying to manifest a relationship with a new partner and it just keeps falling apart, coming together, falling apart, coming together, falling apart, coming together. And finally you realize, oh, okay, I'm too attached. That's what it is. I got to let this person go, or it's about, got to make it more about me or whatever it is. And you kind of heal that space in you. Well, the next time you deal with that person, there is a very strong likelihood. And I would say like a hundred percent likelihood that the same thing's going to happen again, because you're being tested to see, did you actually fix the limitation? So you don't know if you actually fixed a limitation until you're presented with the same dilemma and you respond differently. 
Okay. So when you're coming up against these kinds of things, and I know a lot of you guys are out there trying to heal limitations, when you heal a limitation and the same problem presents itself, you should get excited. Oh, this is time for me to actually show that I've healed. I'm going to deal with this differently this time. I'm going to handle this argument differently this time. Or I'm going to stay detached this time, whatever it is. Okay. You have to clear that hurdle. It actually has to present itself and you have to clear it in order to get to the manifestation. A lot of times people will get that one last block and then they say, well, this didn't work. And they go right back into the, the more negative or lower vibration or, you know, limited way of thinking. Okay. So that's how you clear that test is understand that if you're having the same problem again and again, and again, it's not quite happening. It's almost getting there, but it's not getting off the ground. There's usually one block left. You got to clear the block and you need to be prepared to be tested one more time and respond as if you had actually cleared the block. That's necessary in order to manifest. All right, guys. Again, if you've got manifesting questions, throw them into the chat. We're trying to do this simultaneously today on Facebook and YouTube. So there's a lot going on over here. I'm doing my best. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, Tina Swan on Facebook. My 22-year-old son had a stroke and left foot and hand not working yet. Every day gets better. Prayers and positive vibes helping. Can you manifest health? Well, I would say you're already doing it, right? Okay, so look. Son had a stroke. Left foot and hand not working yet. Every day gets better. Okay, so that's what you want to focus on. Yes, anything can be cured. Anything can be healed. And... A lot of people don't believe that. So, you know, don't expect that a lot of people other than me and some other, you know, law of attraction friends are going to tell you this, but yes, anything can be healed. And so you really want to be focused on if you have some kind of a condition or if somebody else has some kind of a condition, what's working out, how is it getting better? How are they doing better? In particular, when you're dealing with somebody else and wanting to help somebody else heal, you really want you want to get away from the idea that they have a problem or that they can't do it or that they need you to do it for them. I was having a conversation with a friend yesterday and her daughter's been having some issues with friends at school. And so as the mom, she started getting stressed out. She's now worried well, she's having these problems. She's having these problems. I'm going to put her in therapy, but the therapy is not working and all the, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. Well, the reason why it's getting worse is because mom is attending to it as if it is a problem rather than this is part of her journey. She's learning something from this. She's going to be okay. He's going to be okay. They're learning. They're getting better. They're getting stronger. There's something positive coming out of this. You want to be looking at other people in that way. When they have health issues or illnesses or, or stuff like that, the tendency is to look at them as if they are a victim and as if things aren't going to go well for them. And then what that does is that keeps them anchored in our reality as having some kind of a major issue or crisis that they have to deal with. If instead we can look at this through a lens of this is working out for him, this is helping him somehow, he's learning a lot, he, he can clear this, and when he does, he's going to be very empowered by this, and I know he can do it. And when you have that kind of an attitude, you will accelerate the healing, okay? So the big thing is looking at something like that and not letting it scare you and think that it's going to be the end of the world because it certainly doesn't have to be. It can certainly get turned around. Anything can. Anything can. All right. Again, if you guys have manifesting questions, go ahead and throw them into the chat. Joyce asks on Facebook, how do you stay in manifesting mode when you're living in a situation that you can't avoid until you have the financial means. 
Okay, so if you're in that kind of a situation where your your current environment is not ideal, it's a lot like what I was talking about when it comes to like manifesting a new job. If you don't like your current job, you really want to be in a position where you are looking at your current situation as being beneficial somehow. And not only that, but you're doing your best to optimize it for yourself. So a lot of times if we're in a crummy situation, we'll look around and we just see, okay, well, this smells and this is dirty and this person's rude. And we focus in on and zero in on the things that we don't like. But you can just as easily focus in on the things that you do like. Okay, so let me give you a let me give you a case in point. So before I moved into this house, which I really love, and this was like my dream house. Okay, so this was like big manifestation situation living change for me. But we moved out of one house and we had to get a rental home because our first home sold so quickly. Now we had to get a rental home on the fly. And for whatever reason, <laughs> The best thing we came up with was just just not great. It wasn't a great situation. So we ended up in a home that is, is kind of run down because the market was high at the time. It was hard to find a place to stay. And so we went from staying in a pretty nice house into a house that smelled bad and there had been drug dealers that had been living there and the neighbors weren't that nice and there were ants in the front yard and toilets didn't work that great. And, you know, so all of a sudden we went from having a, a pretty nice house to living in more slummy conditions than we were used to. I know, poor me. Okay, poor me. But that was about eight months of having to live in that situation. Now, if I had looked around that house and gotten really disappointed and upset and frustrated with the environment, I very easily could have screwed up this manifestation, okay, this home, because I could have gotten really fixated on this house sucks. I hate living here. This is an awful place, blah, blah, blah. But knowing when we moved in that that was a possibility, okay, because I knew what the house was like, I did inventory on the house and I tried to figure out what do I like most about this crappy house? <laughs> and that's where I'm going to place my attention. Well, it did. It had a couple of things. The one thing that really stuck out the most was that it had a shower and, and the shower wasn't great, but the water pressure and the heat on the shower was just like perfect. I mean, that's a very small thing, but the water pressure and the heat on that shower was absolutely perfect. And so every day when I would take a shower, I would be in there just rejoicing how wonderful the, the heat and the pressure of this shower was. Okay. And so that was one thing that I focused on. And then the really funny thing about that, <laughs> when we moved into this house, this house was being constructed and being built and I didn't know exactly how it was going to come out. You know what my favorite part of this house is? <laughs> it's the shower in this house. Okay, so rejoicing the shower in that house led to me having a really fabulous shower in this house. And so this is really just about where are we placing our attention. Another thing that can be helpful is if you're in a crummy situation, imagine that you came from a crummier situation. Okay, so again, I was in a better house and then I moved into a worse house. So it's easy for me to start looking at this worse house in a negative lens because I'm used to something better. But if I can go into my mind and imagine, what if I was some poor person who came from another country and this was my first place to live and I'd been living in a you know, little shanty somewhere and I came from a war-torn country, how would I be looking at this situation if that was me? Because that way of looking at it will really get your rose-colored glasses put on quickly where you start rejoicing in the positive things about your current situation, and so then you can stay in better alignment because we can always focus on positive or negative, okay? Uh, you guys have questions on manifesting? Please go ahead and throw them into the chat. Okay, Aisha on YouTube asks... I've been cold calling, I'm sorry, cold emailing clients and landed a test run with one. 
but haven't had any more success since while reaching up while reaching out to clients daily for over a month and my income has dried up. Any advice? Yes. Yes. Okay. So if you guys have this experience, a lot of times if people are entrepreneurs or if you are in sales or if you have some kind of a commission job, this can happen where you're doing stuff, but you're not getting the results. So what I would really recommend in a situation like that, Aisha, is you want to shake things up and come up with a different strategy to employ. Okay. I'm not saying that you can't do cold emailing clients, but right now you don't have positive expectation of that. And that's okay. That's okay. So what I would probably do is sit down and think about 20 or 30 things that you could do differently to attract clients and, and go out of the box, you know, look things up online, talk to people, come up with a nice little list. And then from that list, select something that sounds like fun and go try it. Because what you're going to see is that if you come at this with something where you're like optimistic and you think, well, maybe this would be fun. I could try this. It's a different energy than I've been cold emailing for months and it's not working. Okay. So if I just keep doing that, I'm, I'm probably going to keep the same result. If instead I can go take a different approach, maybe calling, maybe doing referrals, maybe doing something on social media, try something different just for fun with an experimentation. This is going to be an adventure. This is going to be fun. Let's just see what happens. Let's see what sticks. It's a more elevated vibration, a more adventurous spirit that you'll have behind what you're doing. And it will keep your mind occupied on this new way of doing things rather than the old way, which is familiar and doesn't seem like it's working. Now, once you get your mojo back, you can come back to the emailing. That's not a problem. But if you ever get stagnant in business or with sales, that's always my recommendation. Look for a different way to do it and try something new and just have fun with it because you'll come at it with a different energy and you'll have more success. And then from there, you know, just focus on having success and the success will build. All right, guys. Thanks for writing in with your questions. Just looking through. Diana says, uh, you actually find the needle in a haystack clothing pieces when I shop with ease. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. Vera says, what if you want to manifest and move somewhere specific and those around you are not interested? <laughs> Go without them. I mean, <laughs> Seriously, though, I mean, if you really wanted to go somewhere, what you waiting on them for? You know, just go. And, and you might be surprised that they come trotting on along behind you. Sometimes that does happen. Um, yeah, you don't want to wait for other people to agree with you before you take action. So if there's something you really want to do, just do it. Okay. Nancy says, what if we are trying to manifest a relationship, but not sure if we still want your current specific partner who would require a lot of changes versus a new person who may already have all the traits that you want? Ooh. Specific person requires a lot of changes. Eh. I mean, if you're not sure, the easier route would just be to go new. Because it sounds like from the question, Nancy, that we kind of feel like, eh, about the, <laughs> about the specific person. And so that's going to require us to really do a lot of focusing. And, and you can do that. I mean, just focus in on the stuff that you like about the specific person rather than the things that you don't. Um, but if you're really kind of that meh about it, it would be easier to manifest somebody fresh just because when somebody new shows up in your reality, they are a blank slate, meaning you haven't assigned any negative characteristics to them yet. And that's what we do. We meet people and people are a blank slate. And then over time we start to assign to them beliefs about them, things that we don't like. And so if there's already a lot of that built up with someone and I'm on the fence, which way to go, I would probably just lean more towards the new person would probably be the easiest thing, but you can do cleanup detail. If you prefer that can be done too. <laughs> Uh, 
Peter D on YouTube. Hi, Andrea. I just got here, but our world is falling, is just falling apart since a couple of days. Could it be the start of a miracle? Do you mean your personal world? It's your personal world. Yeah, that was that was the first thing that I talked about. And on YouTube, unfortunately, I think the sound was off on that. That's the series of unfortunate events test. If a lot of things start going wrong in your world, that can be a sign that you're actually bursting through limitations. And that's why all of a sudden the constructs of your reality can start to deconstruct a little bit and it can start to look like mass chaos. And a lot of times people freak out when those things happen. But if you look back in your life, and I would challenge all of you to do this, look back in your life to some of the worst times in your life. <laughs> and you will probably see that right after those worst times, something really great came in and you're like, wow, okay, I'm glad that I had that breakup or I'm glad that that horrible thing happened. And you can see in retrospect how you had to let go of certain things in order to get the thing that you really wanted. So yes, that could be a test for sure. IV, it's hard to manifest, on YouTube, IV says, it's hard to manifest when I'm in a toxic environment. I'm surrounded by people that are negative and in lack mentality always. How do I keep up with the manifesting in that case? Yeah. Okay. So, and I apologize, guys. This is Florida. And so we have lawn care. And if you hear them zipping by, they are keeping the grass nice for me today. <laughs> All right. What do you do with the toxic environment? Okay. So a big thing is learning how to shut things out. And I talked about this in another live about distractions. You want to try and limit the amount of distractions that you're having. Okay. So if there's a lot of toxic people in your environment, don't make yourself so available to them. That's the big thing. So you do not need to answer every phone call. You do not need to be available for text messages all the time. You want to make your time, your time as much as possible and only be dealing with people if, and when you're in a positive vibration, if possible. Now, sometimes that can be tricky because you may be in a situation like, let's say you're in an office building and the people sitting around you are like crazy and like <laughs> you can't get away from them. How many of you deal with that situation? I know I used to. I used to work at a call center way back and there were some people, oh my gosh, you know, that can be tricky. So if there's people like right there in your face, you know, what do you do? Well, you know, you can do things like you can use earbuds and tune them out. You can ask to be sat somewhere else. You know, you can find a way to kind of zone into your personal world as much as possible when you're around people like that. Put the attention on you rather than on them. Okay. So this is the big thing with people that I think is like super helpful advice. Everyone's so attentive to what's going on out there. Okay. And when we're paying attention to what's going on out there, that changes what's going on with me. So now I'm externally focused, you know? So if they're behaving well, then I can be happy. But if they're not behaving well, then I'm going to have problems, right? So we don't, we don't want to do that because now all of a sudden our vibration really isn't up to us. It's more up to what's the external world saying. So instead, what you want to do is you want to find a way to dial in with yourself paying attention to you. What do you want to be doing? What do you think? How do you feel? What do you want to focus on? And narrowing in on that because then the attention is on you. And when the attention is on you, you're more focused on staying clean with your vibration. So I know people can be distracting, but I would look at them. If there are distracting people in your reality that are toxic, look at them as a test. Okay, this is testing my ability to focus internally rather than externally. This is a test. Okay, I'm so happy this is here because this is teaching me how to focus internally and set the tone for my own vibration. When you really get a wrangle over that, focusing internally rather than externally, you're going to find that toxic people will change or they'll go away because now all of a sudden you're really keyed into this is my flow state. This is where I am. This is where I exist. This is how I do well. And the external world reflects the internal world. So the external world will start to mirror that back to you and people will fall in line with your positive state. And it's funny because people who are toxic will suddenly become not toxic. It's pretty remarkable that they can do that 
because people are multifaceted, okay? They're not just one way. Rather, we align with them, with whatever version of them we are most a match to in that moment, okay? And so when we're externally focused, it usually means we're frustrated, and so we see them more often as toxic, okay? All right, guys. Thank you so much for writing in with your questions. Again, this has been a dual live between YouTube and Facebook. I've done my best here, but let me know what you thought or if I should just do these two individually next time. We'll find <laughs> let me know what you think. Um, but again, also, I did post a link for the sale on the two manifesting programs. These are two of my more popular manifesting programs that will be having their best sales of the year that are coming up. One of them is Manifesting Mastery. That is my beginner to intermediate program. It is a step-by-step -step boot camp for people who are either not getting manifesting results or who are getting spotty or inconsistent results. The other program that's having its best price ever sale is going to be my Signs from the Universe program. That's one that teaches you how to follow guidance. Okay, so people who are really good at noticing signs and symbols and guidance do a really good job of staying on track, following inspired action and getting to their dreams. And people who are not good at interpreting that oftentimes will go in the opposite direction. And so Signs from the Universe is a program that teaches you how to intuit and interpret these signs from the universe. And so both of those programs are having their best sale of the year. This is the lowest price that I will offer them at. And so if you're interested in getting notifications for those two programs, again, I do have links. There should be one on YouTube and pinned at the top. And there's also one that should be on Facebook. Hopefully you guys can see that one. So sign up for that if you are interested. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for signing on. It is my intention to do another live on Sunday. Hopefully we keep the audio on this time. We'll see. <laughs> but thanks again for signing in, guys. It's been a lot of fun talking to you. And I hope you guys enjoy the end of your week. All right. All right. Bye-bye.